Anyone who knows my work will recognise the Kenworth Castle pieces, but very few people will have got to visit, so I thought it would be a good idea to take a quick tour of the castle and show you the places that have inspired the works and to give a hint of works yet to come. This is a classic view of the castle across the mere, and this floods whenever we get heavy rain. This is the angle that I used for the Kenworth Castle in snow embroidery, and in this lovely autumnal light it's just gorgeous. The approach to the castle is really dramatic. This is the view that I used for the embroidery Kenworth Castle from the Braes. They've built a gift shop here since, which I'm not sure if I like or not, because it does rather ruin the view. The castle is a ruin. It was demolished during the English Civil War by the Roundhead Army, as it was a royalist stronghold. This means it's quite atmospheric and you don't have the same sort of touristy thing that you do with the more complete castles of the experience. You can just enjoy the castle itself. Coming in through the entrance, everything just opens up before you. This is fabulous Elizabethan barn to the right here which I'm already working on another piece for. This is the keep up ahead, it's the oldest part of the castle and it dates back to the 12th century. This part over here was built by Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, for the Queen Elizabeth's visit. Over here is the gatehouse, which is the only remaining part of the castle that's still intact. I suppose unless you count the barn. And outside the front it has the most gorgeous garden. I love this garden and I'm still trying to work out how to come up with a piece to encompass it. There's a beautiful bit of knot garden over here that was my original thoughts for the knot garden embroideries but then they created the Elizabethan gardens and so I worked with those. But I'm going to have to do something with this. This is the entrance to the gatehouse and you can see Robert Lester's initials carved above the doorway. We're coming into the Elizabethan garden now. These are the knot gardens that I've used in my embroideries. They've been recreated from an account of the gardens that were created for Elizabeth the First visit in 1575. You can't really get a good view of them from here, so what I'm going to do is go up and get myself a more aerial view. And the best place to get that from is up there.
Well I've made it up the old stone spiral staircase to get this fabulous view of the knot gardens from above, or nearly above. As it's October the planting isn't at its best time of year, but I'll try and find a photo of it in a more summery place. One of my favourite anecdotes about these gardens is when I was giving my daughter and her friends, who were all about five at the time, a bit of a tour round one day. We were talking about them and one of the girls turned around to me, very seriously said, why is it not a garden? I just loved that. I just love the light today. I'm not sure if this will come out on camera but I thought I'd give it a go just to see how it looks. Okay, I admit this place wouldn't make a great embroidery, but it echoes so beautifully I wanted to see what it sounded like on camera. It's the cold storage room, by the way, not a dungeon. This is the Great Hall. It was built in the 1370s, and I believe at the time was the largest hall of its type in the world. Apparently these windows used to have more of the tracery in them, but some Victorian decided it would look more romantic if he knocked it all out, which I think is a real shame. I do hope to be able to find something to do with one of these in an embroidery soon. Even the graffiti in this place is ancient. Apparently my grandfather left his name here somewhere but I've never found it, and I don't condone his actions. Just look at how the wind has weathered the stone, and the rain I suppose. It's fabulous. This is a very soft sandstone and it's a local brick and a lot of it was taken away to build other houses in town when the castle was demolished so you can see little bits of the castle all over. This is the older, the part, oldest part of the castle, the Norman Keep. Look how thick the walls are. Not much of it remains now, but you can see what an effective stronghold it would have been. With a lovely view out over the gardens. The 
put this new walkway in Leicester's building so that you can get an idea of what the state apartments were like. I'm not very good with heights, so I don't enjoy it that much. But I brought you up here because there's some fabulous views. And yes, I know I say fabulous a lot. And a pigeon. You can see from the views here why it would have been such a good defensive place to have a castle. You can see for miles, well, you can see trees for miles. But isn't that beautiful? Now all I've got to do is work out how to get down. I consider myself very lucky to have a place like this on the doorstep. It's well worth a visit if you're ever in the vicinity. I grew up here, we used to come here all the time as children and I bring my daughter all the time. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour and that it's put some of my work in context and will give some context for the future projects that I hope to do. If you're ever in the area, please do come and visit, because what I've shown is just a taster. There's a whole load more to see and explore, and it's well worth it.